the most interesting question in astronomy, in my view, and perhaps in science altogether, is whether there is life elsewhere. And not just primitive life, but intelligent life outside of the solar system. We don't know the answer to that. And we have the tools and the technology right now to do the search and find out perhaps the answer to that. Um, it's interesting that um, in principle, if, if we start from the solar system, uh, you can imagine that there might be a spaceship passing through the solar system, or maybe there is on one of the objects in the outer part of the solar system, perhaps there is a city uh, of another civilization. Can we actually see it? Turns out that if you consider Tokyo, for example, a, a prominent city on Earth, and place Tokyo at the edge of the solar system, with modern telescopes, you can actually see it. People are not searching, but you can actually see a city like Tokyo all the way to the edge of the solar system. And the way to tell the difference between a source of light associated with, let's say, artificial light produced on an object and all the other objects that simply reflect sunlight is that if you look at an object that simply reflects sunlight, um, the flux of radiation that we receive from that object declines as one over the distance to the fourth power uh, from that object because the farther the object is, the less flux from the sun that it intercepts. And then there is another factor of one over distance squared that comes from the fact that uh, we see a flux that is going down as one over the distance squared of that object from us. So combined together, there is a decline in the flux of the object as one over distance to the fourth. However, if there is artificial light produced by the object, then there is only one factor of one over distance squared. So in principle, if you see an object moving away from us, you can tell whether it's producing its artificial light, like a city, or whether it's reflecting sunlight. And surprisingly, nobody checked in the solar system whether there is any evidence for a distant source of light that is not simply reflecting sunlight. But going beyond the solar system, um, it would be interesting to know if, for example, there is even primitive life, or not, not to speak about intelligent life, but primitive life. One way to find evidence for primitive life is to look for planets that are orbiting other stars. And by now, we know of thousands of such candidate planets that orbit uh, other stars. Uh, we can look for specific planets that are at the right distance from their host star to have life on them, just like the Earth is at the right distance to have liquid water on its surface. And if we imagine life as we know it, then uh, perhaps there is another planet similar to the Earth orbiting uh, at the right distance in the habitable zone around uh, another star. And the way to find out whether there is life in that planet from a distance would be to look for a transit of the planet. So if the planet is crossing the face of the star, then the atmosphere of the planet could absorb some of the light of the star. And if you take the spectrum of that light, you would see evidence for absorption by molecules that are in the atmosphere of the planet. And for example, molecular oxygen uh, exists in the atmosphere of the Earth, mainly thanks to life. Uh, if life ceased, on Earth, then within a million years, oxygen would have been depleted from the atmosphere. So if we are searching for uh, molecular oxygen uh, on, in the atmosphere of an, another planet around another star, that's one way of finding a biomarker, a marker that tells us that there is um, perhaps life on that planet. The more interesting question is whether intelligent life exists, whether there are other civilizations similar to ours or much more advanced than ours, because if they exist, we could ask them questions to which we don't know the answer. What is the dark matter? What is the dark energy? It would feel like cheating in an exam, but it would be interesting to know how uh, significant is their knowledge compared to ours. And if they existed for billions of years, more than our civilization, they would be far more sophisticated than ours. So it's indeed a very fundamental search uh, that should be conducted.
And there is no way of guessing whether such intelligent life exists or not. I think the right way is to explore, to, to, to try and find out. And for several decades, people have searched for radio waves, uh, radio emission from uh, other planets uh, without success. And right now, there is uh, a new um, uh, generation of radio telescopes that could, in principle, eavesdrop on radio emission similar to the one we are producing uh, from planets at a distance of out to um, several tens of light years away. We have been broadcasting for about 50 years or 60 years uh, radio waves. And so there is a bubble around the Earth uh, where radio signals are moving out. And, and this bubble is keep, keeps growing at the speed of light. Right now it's roughly 50 or 60 light years away from us. And if there is another civilization out there, they could in principle figure out that we developed radio technology here. Uh, but we can do the same thing and search for other civilizations at those distances with existing radio technology. Another interesting possibility uh, is to ask, uh, can we use existing telescopes uh, or telescopes that will come online within the next five to ten years to search for uh, primitive life in the way that I described before? And perhaps after we find primitive life, we can look for additional signals, uh, like radio signals from the same planets? The answer to that is, uh, in principle, yes, uh, it's possible to, for example, search for Earth-like planets around white dwarfs uh, within the next decade. Um, and it would be possible to search for primitive life in the atmosphere of such planets. The reason it's possible to do that um, is because the size of a white dwarf, a white dwarf is the end um, state of the sun. When the sun will consume all of its nuclear fuel, it will cool, eventually become a much smaller and denser object that is a hundred times smaller than the size of the sun right now. Uh, it's called a white dwarf. It's basically very dense material that is rather cold. After a few billion years, the surface temperature of the white dwarf will actually be similar to the surface temperature of the sun, around 6,000 degrees Kelvin. So it will have the same color as the sun has in a, a few billion years after the, the sun dies, except that it's much smaller, 100 times smaller than the sun. It actually has the size of the Earth. A white dwarf has roughly the size of the Earth. So now, you can imagine that if you take a planet like the Earth and place it a hundred times closer to a white dwarf than the Earth is from the Sun, that it would keep itself uh, sufficiently warm because it would be closer to the source of heat that keeps it, it warm. And so there is a habitable zone around the white dwarf. And if there happens to be an Earth-like planet in that habitable zone, then in principle you, that planet could have life on it. And the reason it's practical to detect biomarkers in the atmosphere of such a planet is because the size of the Earth is similar to the size of the white dwarf. So when the, an Earth-like planet passes in front of the white dwarf, it covers a substantial fraction of the surface area of the white dwarf. So the effect, uh, the spectral signature on the spectrum of the white dwarf is quite substantial. And so with the James Webb Space Telescope that is scheduled to be launched in uh, 2018, uh, it should be possible, based on calculations that, that we have done, uh, it should be possible to detect signatures of uh, molecular oxygen in the atmosphere of an Earth-like planet orbiting around the white dwarf. So this is an example for something that will be possible within the next uh, five to ten years. Finally, one can ask, when did life start in the universe? It's quite possible that life is everywhere. It's just difficult for us to detect it. In 2013, um, I was curious to know whether we could, in principle, detect a nuclear war that a civilization has on an extraterrestrial planet, on a planet far away. And I found out that even with the best telescopes, we shouldn't be able to detect any signal uh, in a reasonable amount of time, uh, 
meaning that uh, even a very explosive and bright event like a nuclear war is not easily detectable. So it's quite possible that life exists everywhere. And it's very subtle. It's very difficult for us to see a signature of that life. And that's why we live under the illusion that we are special and that we are unique. Um, so it would make a lot of sense to ask the question, when did life, could have life, started in the universe? In 2013, I uh, thought about this question. And I realized that, in fact, as we go back in time, the universe was hotter because as it expands, it cools. And the universe is filled with radiation, the cosmic microwave background, that has a temperature of 3 degrees Kelvin, very cold temperature right now. But as we go back in time to when the universe was 15 million years old, around the time when the very first stars formed, the temperature of the cosmic microwave background was 300 degrees. And so, in principle, if there were rocky objects that were made at that time, the entire universe was habitable. The temperature in the universe would allow liquid water to exist and would enable the chemistry of life in that water. The only question is whether water existed at that early time. Did rocky planets exist at that time? Um, and so these are still unresolved questions. We don't know exactly when the first stars made heavy elements. But this is the earliest time that we can imagine when life could have started in the universe. And most likely, the chemistry of life was much more likely, much more developed um, when the universe was a billion years old. Because by then, there were lots of stars similar to the sun filling up the universe. And so life could have started very early on. The fact that we exist at this time in the universe does not imply that the universe was designed for us to exist just at this time. And some physicists um, try to argue that the value of the cosmological parameters were such that we would exist right now in a galaxy like the Milky Way. And so they try to explain the values of cosmological parameters this way. However, if we allow for the possibility that life could have started very early on, then clearly the conditions in the universe were very different than they are today. And so the universe was not designed for us to exist right now in a galaxy like the Milky Way. It could have, life could have existed earlier. And so in my mind, this anthropic reasoning for the values of cosmological parameters that would allow our existence is, uh, should be qu questioned based on this uh, uh, reasoning.